Today we are talking about a new controller for a Tesla motor. One of the most available motors we can find is usually a Tesla motor. For those of you who are new, we do things with electric motors like this truck here. We've got a Model 3 motor. We also do things with Model S motors like this one. Regardless of what motor you use, you need something to control that motor. Something that interprets all the things like the accelerator pedal being pushed down, the temperature of the motor, how many amps to draw. There's lots of things that these motor controllers need to do. So this is Watson, my home-built Tesla Roadster. So in this episode, we're gonna use Watson as a test mule for this new controller. Let's get to it. Watson had some troubles and we were actually in need of a new motor controller. Let me take you back a few months. So when I turn on the car, um, the motor controller is not talking to the inverter. I turn on the car. Nothing. Um, I don't have any lights in my gear selector, but I gotta take everything back apart. I did not make this car very uh, accessible for these sorts of things. I've been driving this one for about four years now. Um, it's been great. With that being said, in February, I took this out. Uh, there was a sponsor that wanted to do a dash cam. We, they wanted this car, so we did a dash cam with it. Drove it like normal, parked it, and next time I went out to, to use it, um, you know, the car turned on, but the motor controller, it wasn't happy. Something wasn't, wasn't working right. So anyway, I was just planning to get another one and replace it, but as circumstance would have it, another company reached out and said, hey, we've got this new motor controller. We'd wonder if you'd like to try it out. So I was like, hey, this happens to be a, a good time. Um, I'll, I'll give it a try, because uh, I'm, I'm actually looking for a motor controller. What we got today. So this is a vehicle control unit, which is kind of a step up from a motor controller. This one boasts drivetrain control with Cascadia Motion and Tesla drive units without replacing the inverter logic board. It has advanced calibration so you can fine tune vehicle parameters. It also has extensible plugins, which allows you to customize control algorithms without modifying core firmware. It also has built-in GPS support, real-time monitoring, and an intuitive interface. So I don't know if the guys at Dynam know, but most of my installations, I try to take the most challenging approach. So for sure, we'll encounter some things that they probably haven't seen before. This is a new offering since the time I started my build. So I'm excited to see what this has and how it differs from what I'm used to. All right, we've been working under here, getting some new connectors. So those new connectors will go into controller. Russ is wiring it up. This one uh, requires the pedal input to go to the controller. That's kind of different from the other one. We've got things plugged in and we've got a red light. That is kind of the first uh, thing that's interesting. Um, nothing's configured. The other thing we did is we just jacked it off the ground ever so slightly so if for whatever reason it decides to spin the wheels, we're not uh, driving through the garage. But yes, yeah, so we'll hook it up to the computer and see what we can do. Loading from device, receiving channels. So yeah, he's got everything, I think. VCU pedal signal invalid. So we've been uh, dialing in and putting uh, the parameters in for this new controller. So we just uh, calibrated the throttle pedal and uh, I think we're about ready to flash the drive unit. All right, we're gonna flash the drive unit. We need to do Tesla large drive unit. All right, so we're getting this uh, nice warning before we start, but that is my build configuration. So we're in the process of flashing and uh, so far everything's green, which is good. Stay green, stay green, stay green. Technology with cars isn't changing that much except for the interior. And that's where Get Pair can help you. So if you've got a car that's like 2016 or later, the infotainment system can be pretty dated. One quick way to correct that is with a product like this. This is a portable screen for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Looks super nice. It's got a nice adhesive pad to stick to your dash. And it looks like it's got a USB-C. Looks like it's got a micro SD card and then a AV in and auxiliary port. All right, so we now have it set up. So again, this is the old screen. This is the new screen. So it kind of can update any car to kind of modern era. So we're gonna go ahead and take this guy off. This is GetPair portable car display screen. Smart, fast, and made for every ride. Touch screen that shows your maps, movies, and apps all in one place. So we're gonna go ahead and power off and make sure it automatically connects. 
says device found and then it's back. No wires with CarPlay or Android Auto Go, wireless and plug and go in seconds. The touch is smooth at 60 frames per second, so swipes and taps feel quick and nice. It also has a split screen, so you see navigation and something else like a video or music. It also comes with over 10 streaming apps built in Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, TikTok. Whether you're driving a car, truck, or boat, this fits in. It even works day or night with special display modes. If you're looking to update your car and get some wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, this is the product for you. I'll leave a link in the video description below. So you didn't think things would be easy, did you? So we've got things uh, set up. We've done a lot of programming, a lot of uh, setting inputs and outputs, uh, but for whatever reason, pre-charge isn't working and doing some uh, troubleshooting, it looks like the negative contactor isn't closing. So uh, got to figure out which pin or what we did to miss that. All right, we've been struggling a little bit uh, with trying to get this to work. It's all good. This is part of the process. Um, yeah, just, I think it's just kind of numbering problems, but uh, yeah, it's amazing how complex I can make wiring to be when it should be pretty straightforward. But uh, just going through a few details and uh, the guys at Dynam Labs have been pretty good to get back to us. Uh, they FaceTimed us, they've uh, logged onto our computer, tested things, given us code. So the support there has been pretty good. So hopefully we can get this thing moving pretty quickly. Yeah, so we're gonna try this. Um, we think it's maybe working, but who knows? All right, so we're gonna turn on the car. We're hoping for this one right here airs to stay like nothing. Whoa, there's quite a bit of clicking. Wi-Fi enabled. So VCU comes air. So that one's CAN2, which is, I don't wanna say good, but that one's expected. So we're gonna use CAN2 to do like uh, run a tablet for a screen. So we're expecting that because we don't have anything um, talking in there yet. Um, but that's the only one. So brake switch we're getting. If I do throttle, we're getting. So we're gonna try switching. So again, the backlight means it knows that we're in neutral, which it says. We're gonna try and go into gear. It says yes. Um, yeah, we're not getting anything. So we're close, but there's still Still something we gotta unlock, because usually you can kind of hear it whine when it starts, like a high-pitched whine. Not hearing that, which means it's like not quite communicating. So we're getting close. Um, we struggled a bit with the CAN messages. Um, we got some new firmware and we checked some wiring. We got some of the wiring uh, mixed up. We kind of had a couple different people working on it. Um, I take full responsibility, but uh, Anyway, so I think we got most of that worked out. We just have a few error messages now. Right there. So I think the CAN2 we understand because uh, that's not hooked up. The other one, I'm not quite sure what that is. All right, so I think we might be there. There was a pedal, accelerator pedal calibration um, change that was needed. And we've made that change. So now we're gonna turn it on. Hopefully all these errors clear and we're good to go. Down here. Okay, so we still have the, the CAN2 air, which we know about. I don't know if a warning's a problem, but we'll uh, see. All right, so we did not have our throttle pedal mapped. So now we're mapped. Uh, now we got the throttle pedal mapped. We're gonna try this in gear and see if we can get this to spin the first time with the new controller. So we're gonna go into drive. See, I can hear it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Let's try reverse. We got it! Yay! So there's going to be some more uh, things we need to figure out, like uh, reverse lights, brake lights. No, reverse lights are on. Are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did figure that one out. That was, that was Russ. I'm pretty sure he was a smart guy on that one. But yeah, we got, uh, but no brake lights. We need to figure out brake lights. Um, we're also gonna do, I'll call it like a soft start, meaning we're gonna limit uh, power, take it just kind of around the block before we uh, let her loose. All right, we've got the motor spinning the wheels again. But as you recall, the wheels are off the ground. So we need to get this off the jack stands and we'll take it out for the first drive with the new motor controller. We have limited it to about like 100, I think it's amps or 150 amps. So again, it should not uh, see crazy acceleration, but uh, just kind of trying to test some circuits. 
Make sure everything's doing okay before we start turning it up. John, look, we're moving. Oh my gosh. You're doing it. You're doing it. It's doing car things. Yeah. It's One other thing. Um, I'm going to see if regenerative braking works, like if we get brake lights. A little bit of speed and just see if it regens. I guess that's another thing is if it regens. So that was good? Yeah. All right. Regen's working. Regen brakes are working. It feels great to drive it again though. Yeah, I don't, I was going to say I didn't bring the laptop, so maybe I should uh, plug in the laptop, see if there's any errors, but it seems like all happy. We are driving again. It's the first time in like five months. It's awesome. So remember there was that one part in the movie Fast and Furious where he's got his laptop on the floor. That's what we got going on. We're driving, checking things out. All right, so we did our first run. And uh, I tried turning up the power. I just wanted to kind of feel, make sure we're kind of at similar power. And we're not. We're like third power. It's like if I floor it, it's like, I don't know, like a 200, 300 horsepower car, not like a 600 horsepower car. So got to figure out some more settings. So we figured out why we were not getting full power with the unit. There are two ways that we can limit the power. One is with the drive modes. You can set up drive modes to have kind of limited power. That's one of the things we did. The other way is with the battery management system. That's another element on this VCU and you can actually limit how much amps the battery can draw with this unit. Once we had both those turned up, the car was at full power. So we've got the new controller. It's all wired. It's now in the car. We've tested a lot of the systems. We've actually gone out for some drives. We are not there yet. So we've got a couple of things we need to adapt to get this fully functioning. One is we've got a GPS antenna. So that'll help us be able to do things like speed. The other one is called a meat pie. Basically this one takes a CAN signal and then allows it to be transmitted via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And so we're gonna use that for the iPad. All right, so I'm gonna show you, this is the iPad that I've got in my display. So I'm gonna show you the app that I used forever. So this is the EV controls app. And basically it's got the speed up here. It's got your kilowatts here. Over here is your RPMs. You've got your voltage and your temperature. So again, this is a pretty decent setup, right? Not bad. But if you ever wanted to change something like, hey, I want amps, not kilowatts, or I'd rather have a different style face or something, that just wasn't an option. This is all you got. So now I'm gonna show you the real dash real quick. This you can kind of configure however you want. And then that's what this one is. And it's got kind of your miles per hour. Over here, it's got your RPM. Over here, it's got your pound feet of torque. You've also got your pedal position and battery uh, voltage. Again, we can add things or remove things or we can move things around. So I can say edit. And we're just gonna scoot these ones up because my steering wheel kind of is pretty low. All right, we'll keep it like that. Again, we can tweak as much as we want, but we'll just keep it like that for now. The last display I had, I spent a lot of time on the iPad automation. So basically when I turned on the car, it would automatically open up an app. When I turned off the car, it would automatically close it and so it wouldn't just drain the iPad battery. So basically all I did is I went into that same automation and instead of choosing the one app, I chose the other app. So everything's good to go. So it just opens up to the real dash. We're good to go. And same thing when I turn it off. Basically, I've got it going to a clock app and that'll just time out after about 30 seconds. And now it's time to finally put some of these panels back that have been out for a long time. We've done a lot of testing. I've driven this about 500 miles with this new system. I wanted to give it at least 500 miles so we can make sure to capture all my typical driving situations. What's your name? My name's London. London, nice to meet you. What's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy, nice to meet you. Cool. Oh.
Thank you. Nice. It's been quite the journey for you. All right, the car is back together. We got everything nice and clean like it's new uh, with a new controller. So that's uh, awesome. I feel like it's a new car, especially since I haven't been driving it since February. So again, a long time. It's a reunification with my car. This is great. So let me tell you about some of the features and some of the things I like, some of my experiences, both bad and good. So I will start off by saying, I think the installation of this one is a little more challenging than the other one. Um, the other one kind of had, I'll say, a pre-described, hey, this wire goes here, this wire goes here. Um, and this one was more like, here is the set of wires. You can choose how to hook it up. So with that being said, it gives the builder more opportunities, more ways to use the product, but uh, it's not quite as straightforward. Then you have to do pedal calibration. That actually took a while and we had some, some warnings and things where our calibration wasn't quite right the first time. So we had to kind of do some more calibration. So again, that one takes a little more time. They offer a lot of controls or ways to controls. They've got PWM, they've got high side outputs, low side outputs. These are all just ways to control various parts of your car. So if you want something to turn on at a certain time or turn off at a certain time, those are ways to do that. The display. So display is something different. The controller that I had previously, pretty easy to set up, display an app, but it was only iPad. The good thing though, is it had like basically everything you wanted. Um, the slightly downside is you couldn't configure it at all. It was like, there's just one app, all the gauges, everything was displayed the same way. So if you ever wanted say like a different background or a gauge to be bigger, smaller, anything like that, there was no option to kind of customize. So this one, it was way more challenging to set up. With that being said, you can then set it up exactly how you want. You want bigger font, you want different font, you want this gauge, that gauge. Um, you can set it up exactly how you wanted. I will give a challenge to all you out there. If anybody's got like a really cool Real Dash app or setup, send it to me. I think we can get them to have it be like their default app. So it can be a really cool background gauges, things like that. So if anybody's got something like that or would like to do something like that, uh, let me know and I think we can make it happen. I will say probably the biggest difference for me was customer support. So the previous company, I felt like I was a burden. Anytime I had something go wrong, I felt like I had to exhaust all resources before I tried to call them or contact them. Yeah, a little bit challenging. Um, this, this new company is kind of quite the opposite. They were very happy to help. Um, I would just send in texts or, or emails and they would answer like evenings, weekends. Um, so it seemed like they're very uh, happy to help. I thought that was a great thing to have a company that's interested in the success of your project. There's little things, little nuances that I didn't love. Um, the way to connect is through an ethernet. I just think like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or even USB would probably be preferred. But again, once you do it, it's fine. It's not a problem. There is an app. That's the main app that you kind of can program and then send that program to the device. So that one I quite liked. It was pretty intuitive. It had a couple different pages. You could kind of walk through things. So I thought all that was pretty good. They did have a plugin page. So basically you can write your own code and have uh, various things happen. If this button is pushed, display this, or if this one's this, uh, PWM that. And for me, where I'm now building cars for other people, this really opens up quite a bit of things we can do. Really the sky's the limit for what you could do with programming and the use of this device. So I did wanna make this video because um, there's probably people like me that are looking for various uh, ways to control the Tesla motor and they just don't know about uh, things that are out there. So this is just one more that I'll say that's out there um, and they are a new and rising company. So if you are interested, um, I think I might have some connections where I could actually start selling these um, if you guys think that's a good idea. Um, I do have a new website and I'm probably going to start selling some things like this, um, various things that people would want to build cars. Uh, tell me if you think that's a good direction that I should go in and if you think this would be a good product that I should offer. But yeah, that's going to do it for this time. See you next time. Driving, what did I say last time? Encounters? No. I'm driving, God, I suck at this. Motor. One of the most, what do you want to say? That's a long backstory and I probably won't use all that.